Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me for tea time once again. Today we have just a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. You know how much I love that bergamot. So that's what we got for today. We're getting to the end of it. I need to get some more. Anyways, guys, if you want to pick up some of these teas for me, you can go over to my website, jchristina.com or head over to darkmoonteas.com. You guys wanted them? I'm giving them to you. If you head over to my website, you can use promo code YT20 at checkout. You don't have to just have to pick up teas. You can pick up anything that I've created over the many years and get 20% off just for being here and subscribing. So go do it. So today is going to be a Panasonic day. Now, I want to talk a little bit about their DFD, which stands for Depth from Defocus. Their methodology of doing autofocus um, in comparison to, for example, other companies like Canon that use their dual pixel AF, which is a phase detection type of autofocus. Now, for many, many years now, we know that Panasonic's had focusing issues. Now I've had a lot of colleagues in the past that say, you know, I just cannot stick with Panasonic for doing these video ad spots because a lot of my folks do video. So they do 15 second, 30 second, 40, 60 second ad spots. And a lot of them were using like GH5S's, GH5's and whatnot. And they said, you know, the focusing is just horrendous. All right, it hunts all over the place. We have to shoot uh, manual focus and we're in 2020, which is ridiculous. And there's just a lot of problems with it that we just can't get around. So we wanted to move forward. And a lot of them went into Canon and they went over to the C-Series because the C-Series is just, it's just awesome. It works out really great. Um, not just because I'm a Canon shooter, but for video, a C100, 200, 300, 500, whatever, they are workhorses for video. They just do an amazing job. Built-in fans, you never have to shut it off basically you can record for hours um anyways that being said some of them said you know what i want to wait for panasonic's s1 to see how that turns out and while it was not bad a lot of them said you know it's just not there yet it's just not there yet so it's like you know that's not good that is not good panasonic is known for being a video type of company when it comes to these micro four third cameras. A lot of people buy GH5s and GH4, GH5Ss for what? For video, right? Not just photo, a lot of it is for video. So I wanna go into um, a little bit about what Panasonic is doing and why I think that it's still deficient over something like Canon's dual pixel AF. And now Canon has dual pixel AF too which is even better, which isn't good for Panasonic. Um, that's doing the contrast detect in this uh, DFD type of situation. So what I wanna do is I wanna explain to you what dual pixel is first and then what this DFD is and kind of get an idea of why Panasonic is having this issue and get your thoughts on it. I might be wrong with a couple of spots here and there. And if I am, please let me know. All right. I don't claim to be the all no wizard here, you know, behind the YouTube camera that just gives you 100 percent accurate stuff. Sometimes I'm off. Sometimes I'm wrong. And if I am in the comment area in this video, tell me where I got it right, where I got it wrong. And let's have this conversation. So to start out with, what is dual pixel AF and how does it work? Well, basically, it uses a micro lens in front of every single pixel. And then behind every single pixel, there is two photodiodes, all right? You're basically bringing light in through your lens. And then that light is directed through these micro lenses that sit in front of every pixel that break apart or split that light beam into two beams of light. Hence, focusing them on the two separate photodiodes. Now, this is how the phase detection comes about. It takes those two images, which now are separate. As we bring phase one and phase two into alignment, we have perfect autofocus, all right? This is basically the methodology of how the Canon system or their dual pixel AF works. It is 
fascinating and it is really good and it's really old. They've been doing this for, you know, a half a decade now or so. So it is a really powerful means of doing autofocus um, and doing it well, not only for photo, but also for video. And this is where we get into a deficiency with Panasonic's methodology. Now the way Panasonic's DFD works or their depth from defocus works is completely different obviously because it is trying to figure out what is in focus by understanding what is out of focus. All right? So it works by making tiny focus adjustments and analyzing those adjustments to build this depth map to see where the subject is in the image, to understand where focus should be. Once again, analyzing what is out of focus to figure out what is in focus. But to do that, it's constantly making things out of focus and in focus and trying to figure out where things are. Now, moving subjects is where this ends up being a problem because you're building this map, this depth map, but the map is forever changing. If you're taking a picture of a subject, for example, a portrait, and nothing is changing behind the subject, it is easy to determine where the subject is and now lock on the subject and call it a day. But when the subject is on a skateboard, for example, or dashing through the screen, the map is ever changing. So it's very difficult to do. This causes a major problem when using this type of autofocus system when trying to capture video. Now, what this does is it forces the importance of subject tracking, all right? Or this machine learning, where it understands where the subject is or where it needs to track. So instead of tracking the entire full sensor of data, it could track a little portion, let's say an eyeball, as it's moving around, causing it to not have to do as much processing, okay? Which is okay, but once again, you have to get that subject understanding or that learning down really, really well to be able to get this to work. Now, what they've done from the Panasonic S1 to the S5 is really quite good. Number one, they improve that subject recognition. So it doesn't have to constantly refocus and refocus and try to figure out what's background and what's foreground. What does this produce? It produces less of that in and out, in and out, in and out that we all know that is just horrendous with Panasonic video. How many times have you seen video from Panasonic cameras, like an old GH4, GH5, whatever, and you see the subject doing this, in, out, in, out, background, foreground, background, foreground, a, just a hot ass mess, okay? And this is one of the things that my colleagues said, we cannot have that, right? We cannot have that. So that was one of the things that they improved and that helped a lot. Also, what they did was they rewrote their AF code, their autofocusing code, so that it works a little bit harder and faster by combining both the subject recognition with the subject movement tracking. So it's not doing it separately, it can do it together instead of focusing more on like the machine learning. The machine learning is, figuring out, oh, this is an animal, or oh, this is uh, a face, oh, this is whatever, okay? And then focusing on that. But by not having to rely on that machine learning and simply just speed up and combine the subject recognition as well as that movement tracking, it gives the processor a more focused target on what it needs to be processing, all right? Because there's a limited amount of cycles that these processors are working on. And as time goes by, obviously, they get faster and faster and faster. Well, this will, once again, produce less pulsing, all right? Because we'll figure out where the subject is. Like I said, instead of reading an entire sensor, it goes straight to an eye and it'll just stay right around the eye instead of doing this in and out, in and out, 
craziness that Panasonic is known for. So what Panasonic is doing here is providing this processing a dumbed down version of what it's capturing. For example, if it's capturing a photo, it could provide the processor a, instead of 12-bit, maybe an 8-bit. Instead of a full resolution image, maybe a low resolution image. Whatever it is, because the processor then can use that data, which is good enough, to figure out the focus. And then when it takes the photo, all right, it uses the full everything. Full resolution, full depth, full everything. That's okay when you're taking photos. But where the yarn just starts unraveling is when you do video. Now you can't take a low res and then create a high res. No, whatever you're taking in is exactly what you're capturing, right? This makes it harder. So what happens is even capturing 24p is difficult for holding focus in video mode because it's dealing with a ton of data. Forget about 30p and 60 p and 120p it's just it's not going to do it or it's not going to do it well that's just basically it we understand that most of these sensors now full frame sensors like sony's and whatnot are capturing around i think it's about 21 milliseconds 22 millisecond readout of 12 bit video so at that speed you need 48 FPS to produce a 24p video and it's just not there yet all right it's like on the cusp so even 24p with the current setup that DFD provides still is not perfect it's not enough and forget about 30 and 60 and 120 like I said it's not enough data why is that video is typically shot at a shutter speed that is twice that of the frame rate what does that mean? That means that you need to be bringing in 60 frames per second to produce 30p when capturing, for example, at 1 60th of a second shutter speed, right? So that doubling, it makes it difficult, guys. It makes it difficult. Think about those numbers as you go into 30p, 60p, 120p, doubling, doubling, doubling. It's hard to do. It is simply difficult. This methodology, while I think that it is valid, and I actually use it when teaching people, for example, to do autofocus lens calibration using my focus pyramid on DSLRs. Let me see here, here. So, so check this out. So this is the focus pyramid, all right? I invented this about, uh, about a decade ago. I don't know, eight, 10 years ago, something like this. Well. You can see that there is a scale on here. And what the idea here is to dial in a DSLR lens, for example, so that you get a perfect autofocus every single time. So what we would do is we would dial in this center mark or the center line. The problem is, is sometimes autofocus is just slightly off. It's very hairline finicky, especially if you use something like extremely fast glass, like 1.2, 1.4, something like that. It's a razor fine edge of focus. So what we teach when we show people how to use this is don't look at what is in focus, look at what is out of focus. So the idea here is if we look at this number system, this number 20 at the bottom needs to be as out of focus as the 20 at the top and the 15 and the 15 and the 10 and the 10. And we dial in the focus until we see the five and the five being equally out of focus. Hence getting focus by looking at what is out of focus. Very similar to what Panasonic is doing here, building their depth map, all right? So I understand the methodology here, but the problem, guys, the big problem, my concern, I guess, would be how fast Panasonic can roll out faster and faster processors, not to risk a lot of the video-centric people to be lost to other brands that are using like a dual pixel AF, using phase detection, right? So I don't know. 
I really don't know. I think Panasonic has had issues with this for so long that they should have just said, you know what, let's just move this into phase detect and call it a day, all right? Dual, you can do contrast and phase detect, all right? However you wanna do it, but this DFD, while it is good, and it has a possibility of being great, you have to wait for the tech to catch up to it, to be able to deal with it and do it well, let's say. So even today, while the S5 is definitely leaps and bounds better than the S1 is, all right? When it comes to video, it is still deficient. You're still going to see some pulsation. And as subjects become faster moving through the frame, all right, you're gonna have issues. That's just simply it. If the camera cannot lock in, it just has to deal with too much data. And then also, as you go from 24p to 30p to 60p, it becomes more and more an issue, all right? So these are my thoughts. I wanna know what you think. What do you think Panasonic is doing with this DFD? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Do you think they should stick with it and just simply make better and better and better and faster processors and just keep throwing speed at it instead of changing the methodology? What do you think? Do you think Panasonic is going to lose a lot of video people, like some of the people that I know, to companies like Canon and their C-Series and something like that that we know the autofocus is just dead on all the time and you don't have to worry about it. And if you throw your camera on a gimbal and don't have the ability to go back there and dial it in unless you wanna do it remotely, be able to understand that it's going to focus in on your subject and not lose the subject and not pulsate from foreground to background, which basically creates video that is unusable. Anyways, guys, I wanna hear your thoughts. What do you think? It's Monday, we're back. <laughs> Hopefully I'm gonna throw out more videos for you coming into this week. It's been a really rough one for the last couple of weeks. I have two big projects that I worked on. One of them was a fun project that I'm gonna show you probably in the next couple of days what I did. But anyways, before we go, if you haven't picked up my ebook, please do so. 10 tips at making tack sharp images. How to do it. Something for amateurs, something for pro am, something for professionals. There's something in there for everyone. You can find it over at my website, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. 10 tips at making tack sharp images. Go pick it up. It's free. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That is so helpful and you'll get all of my content immediately. Also, so click this little button over here, this little bell icon. So when I do produce content, you will get notified of it immediately. And if you've gotten this much from this video, even a tiny bit, please give it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. That would help the YouTube gods look kindly on the channel and say, hey, this might be some good content for other photographers and videographers and tech people to watch. So once again, throw it a big thumbs up. That would be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. I would really appreciate it. That's it. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.